Hey, this is Dustin the Grinch with Game Tato. Today I had the fortune of going to Goodwill and finding a stack of PlayStation 2s. They were all very dirty, so I used my Clorox disinfecting wipes. I also used a little bit of Behold. But the most important ingredient of all was my Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. They were freaking awesome. It also doesn't hurt to have some dust off. It really gets the dust off. So first when restoring a PS2, get a wet magic eraser and give the PS2 a quick wipe down. Then give it another wipe down with your Clorox disinfecting wipes. Then if it's still not good enough, then spray it down with some Behold and wipe it down with a Q-tip. And then wipe it down with a magic eraser. Why not? And finally, I wiped it all off with a paper towel. The PlayStation 2 has 8 nubs on the bottom, 4 of which are rubber and 4 are just plastic. Take them all off. Once you do, you'll realize there are 4 fill up tip screws underneath. Unscrew those, please. Now I just gotta rotate it to see if it doesn't explode. You may have a void sticker on the bottom left corner of the console. But as many YouTubers say, the PlayStation 2 is probably a decade past its warranty. So rip that off and dig it open. Now I just gotta rotate it to see if it doesn't explode. So now that I got so now that I got the final two screws out, let's crack this baby up it. You want to jiggle it a little bit from behind, get it loose, shake it a little bit, and then pull it over the disk drive in the front of the console, pulling it forward. And remember people, always be gentle. If you have a launch model PlayStation 2, the best model of all with the iLink port, it's going to have a ribbon cable connecting the reset and the eject button. As you can tell, it's a little difficult to remove. So what you want to gonna do... So what you're gonna want to do is gently pull the eject button backward, and then once it starts to rock, then you could pull it towards your left. Once it's free, just try to be gentle. I've seen a lot of other YouTubers and they're very hardcore on their PlayStation 2s. Now that we've actually gotten the PlayStation 2 open, let's get into the DVD and CD-ROM assembly. You're gonna need a small Phillips screwdriver to actually take the magnetic plate off the top of the drive. Now this PlayStation 2 plays all types of games, but it doesn't play movies at all, so I'm going to want to change that. It's very important you check your PlayStation 2 before you start and see which type of laser you have. If you find another one where the laser works great and the model's the same, then swap it in your one that you want to insert it in. From the perspective in my picture, the top right is the CD laser adjustment, and the top left is the DVD laser adjustment. There is also this little black cable I'm pointing to, and that's how you actually loosen the ribbon cable and pull it out of the console. If you look towards the right, there's also a plastic piece with two teeth. That's actually what moves the laser back and forward. Many times it gets loose and scrapes off the teeth. You may want to get a magic racer and clean that a little bit, or try to find some new teeth to restore them. This is very helpful if your disk drive is grinding. 
so I got 3 out of 4 of these PlayStation 2's repaired. I just want to get this one to the left repaired, but I'm sure if you follow the instructions, you'll always do it. If you have a weak laser, you can always lower the resistance on the bottom of the laser, depending on which CD or DVD-ROM drive is acting peculiar, but this is always a last-ditch effort, because the drive is usually going to go bad after. Remember to like and subscribe, and keep your consoles clean. This is Dustin the Grinch, signing out with Gabe Tato.